Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to cross the Orosund once again and we're going to go back to Denmark and revisit a brewery who were originally one of the famous Danish gypsy breweries. These days though, they have their own big facility in Svininga, right in the centre of Sjælland and having seen the pictures of this place, it looks pretty damn impressive. So hopefully I can go and visit them sometime soon. But this brewery has featured on the channel many a time before and I've reviewed a few beers from this particular their series before as well so looking forward to this one and I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this beer as well so for this review then like I said we are going to go to Svininga in the centre of Sjælland and we're having a look at another beer from Toul so this is double IPA number four it comes in at 8.6% ABV and as usual with this series this is a New England hazy type IPA so um, yeah very very curious to see how this one turns out this beer was released here in Sweden as part of the local Osmoskalug assortment through Systembolaget for March of 2021 and uh, yeah, I think I reviewed both double IPA number one and two, if I remember rightly, but I didn't get three. I didn't manage to get a hold of number three. I don't know if number three came over here to Sweden, come to think of it. But um, yeah, this one, I think should be very interesting. I've heard very, very good things about this particular version of the double IPA. So fingers crossed it lives up to those expectations. But always nice to return to Toul. Probably my favourite beer that I've ever had from these guys would be the Black Salts and Body Malts, which I would still say is one of the best black IPAs out there. And that's just been rebrewed actually. So I would highly recommend that you have a go at that beer if you get the chance. It's just, you know, that that is the benchmark for me when it comes to black IPAs. So make sure that you check that one out. And it is nice to see the black IPA style making a little bit of a comeback actually in recent times. But yeah, for this one, we're going for a style that is really popular at the moment, the New England hazy IPAs. So yeah, looking forward to this. And as I said earlier, I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this beer. So let's see how we get on then. So as always with my reviews, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the taste, just fast forward all the usual links are in the video description below that's the brewery website the link to my other reviews that I've done from total before and you will no doubt see more added to that list in the near future but there's all the usual social media down there if you want to see more reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country city state county province prefecture whatever it is you happen to be interested in do check out the playlist of beers from different countries there is one there for all the Danish beers I've reviewed for you that's being added to very regularly because I live very close to Denmark and I love the Danish beers and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review it's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely hugely appreciated so anyway to tell you a little bit about Toul then on to my brewery notes so as I've told you before Toul was founded by Tobias Emil Jensen and Tori Geinter, who were actually students of Mikael Bjergso, who used to be a physics and maths teacher, but now is, of course, the big boss of Mikeler. But originally they brewed with him in their school kitchens back in around 2005, and they continued to homebrew until about 2010 when they founded Total, which translates into English as two beers. But when Mikael heard that his former students were still brewing, he insisted that they did a collaboration brew together, and this was what became uh, the first Total beer, the double IPA. I would love to see Total re-release that beer as you know like where it all began or something like this i think that would be really cool for them to uh, brew their original recipe in their new facility that they've got in Sweden because they've come a hell of a way since then actually. Uh, but they very quickly built a strong reputation for themselves based on the quality of their beer and with the help of Mikeler they managed to distribute their beers worldwide from very early on. But as is the case with Mikeler, these guys were originally a gypsy brewery so they didn't own their own equipment and they used the spare capacity at a number of other breweries. In Nurbro in Copenhagen they opened up their collaborative beer bar with Mikeler which is called Mikeler and Friends. I still need to go and visit this one. I've never been there in all the years that I've been over here in Sweden so shame on me for that that will be one of the next out and about videos that I film um, but this bar has an exclusive bottle shop you can get lots of random stuff there and they've also got 40 different beers on tap there as well but they now have the Bruce Brew Pub in Copenhagen which opened in 2016 in partnership with Christian Gadient and this basically operates as a kind of a semi-independent company if you like it's kind of it is part of the Toyo family but the brewery itself 
is completely independent and there's also now a second Bruce bar in Oslo up in Norway as well um, but Toil are also the co-owners of the various different Mikula and Friends venues which now includes the bar in Reykjavik and also the bottle hut shop in Torbahallen in Copenhagen which is the thing that looks a little bit like the, Roo, the, the Louvre, the little market hall. I do recommend that you go and check that out as well but they also co-own the Cool Ship and Micropolis bars in the city as well which I've heard are very worth checking out but since 2017 Tori Geinter has been the sole one in charge of the company after Tobias Emil Jensen left to found the ETOH or I don't know how you would pronounce just the ethanol would you just call it ethanol but the ETOH spirits company so he's involved in distilling now but it's a bit of a shame that he left uh, he left Toil, I have to say, but you know, they are doing some pretty in incredible stuff anyway without him. But uh, as of 2019, these guys have a new production facility at Sveninga on Sealand, which is almost right in the middle of the island. It's a former fruit packing factory, from what I understand, fruit packing and processing, but it's got a 150,000 square meter floor space. And the plan that they have there, which is already in operation, is that they have a clean side of the brewery, if you like, which is equipped with a big German Braucon kit. This, this side of the brewery is run by Tim, and there's also the sour side of the brewery which has the fodders the cool ship and all of these other things for producing sour beers and this is run by Nathan Borig and there's a lot of space for barrel aging and various other things in there as well but they released the first beers from Total City in March of 2020 I think I re reviewed the first beer that was released from Total City um, about a year ago that's crazy to think that that place has been um, up and running a year now but uh, as of March 2021 when I am reviewing this particular beer for you, they've produced a 490 different kinds of beer according to Untapped. So they're getting tantalizingly close to the 500 beer mark, which is just kind of crazy when you think about it. 15 years and 500 different kinds of beer from Toil. So um, yeah, pretty damn impressive actually. But uh, these guys are respected worldwide. They do some really, really nice beers. And I do hope that they continue with their kind of historic beers. Well, not historics, maybe not the, the right word. Maybe the beers that they were brewing at the Profbrauerei in Le Christi Hefte down in Ghent in Belgium. That was where the majority of their um, kind of gypsy brewed beers were done actually but they've just rebrewed um, the black salts and body malts which is a beautiful beautiful beer as I said so I hope they do and um, there's a couple of the frontier ones that I didn't manage to review I think I reviewed first frontier I never got the chance to do final frontier and I think there's a few other ones that I need to have a little look at as well but there's quite a few of the classics that I would love to review from Total but these days it's all about the kind of New England hazies and stuff like this but um, yeah that's all I can really tell you about Total for the moment but I think that is a pretty comprehensive history of what they've been doing but if you want to learn more about these guys you can of course check out the brewery website you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on and you can of course check out the Rate Beer Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn more of all the different beers that these guys have done so um, yeah let's get on and have a taste of this beer then so I'll just let you have a little quick look at the artwork before we open it up as you can see it is pretty similar to the ones that we've had before. I think there's been a gold, a silver, a red, and now this one is green. So basically all of these double IPAs look very, very similar. Um, but they do have one that is simply called double IPA now. And I believe that's like a kind of core brew, if you like. That's one that you're always going to get. That is in the core range in Sistembolaget here in Sweden. And I'm not sure if it is just double IPA number one or if it's a slightly altered recipe from the, the first one that they did, or if it's just a double IPA that, that you know, they kind of tweak every so often and change. But um, yeah, there is a regular double IP out there. There you can see Tohul on the top of the beer. 440 milliliter can this one. I think I paid about 55 or 60 Swedish kroners for this one. So let's assume 60. So that's about six euros for the can. Um, that will be um, about five pounds sterling, maybe just a little bit more than that, 5.25 or something. And then it's probably about, you know, seven dollars American maybe, because as I say, the American dollar has dropped a wee bitty. But um, yeah, let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the taste. And then an 8.6% New England hazy, whatever you want to call it, double IPA. And hopefully it's as good as the other ones we've had in this series before. So yeah, let's go for it. Feels like a wee while since I had a Toil beer actually, but I think it was only back in December or so, if I remember rightly. It was the Blizzard in a beer can, which was a really big kind of wheaty, um, turbid type IPA, if I remember rightly. So yeah, this should be quite interesting. There's still a wee bit left in the can, but we'll stick that in a little bit later on. And I'll tell you right now, this beer smells absolutely lovely. Um, it didn't say on the website what hops or anything were in this. I couldn't find that out when I was searching around. And it didn't see on the untapped either. So yeah, that was a bit kind of unusual in this one. But um, yeah, as you can see, 
And as you would expect from a New England IPA, this one's poured a lovely, I would say very kind of bright yellow colour. It looks a little bit like a kind of mango and pineapple juice or something. Not pure bright yellow as you might expect from mango, but it looks as if there's one or two other things in there. I always like comparing these New England IPAs to fruit juices because that's really just what they remind me of. But you can see that when we poured this beer, it had a half finger of a frothy, I would say, um, it had a half finger of a frothy, I would say, um, perfect white head on this one. That's fading away to just be a very, very thin foamy layer now. But there's one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, a few little ones going up towards the bottom of the head. And so overall, it looks very nice. Remember, the colour of these beers is dependent on one, the type of malts that you use, two, the length of your wort boil. The longer you boil the wort, the more the sugars caramelise, thus you get a darker colour. And of course, if you're talking about sour beers and other things, the barrel ageing and the, the adjuncts and stuff is going to play a role in there as well. But the level of haze in a New England IPA is down to the amount of oats and wheat and the ratios of those in the brew as well. But this one for an 8%er. It's got a fairly impressive level of haze to it, but it's certainly not the soupiest and gloopiest 8.6% New England double that I've had before. Um, but yeah, it certainly looks very, very nice, as I, as I said, and you can see that the head has just faded away to be a very, very thin foamy layer, this one. So let's take a closer look at the aroma then and see how we got on. Nothing particularly surprising about this beer in terms of its appearance when you consider what, uh, what style of beer it is. So aroma time, let's go for it. That smells very nice. Um, and again, you can smell these um, toil beers. I'm noticing this with these New England IPAs. They've got a distinct um, aroma to the wheatiness. They must be using a certain type of wheat. I wonder if it's local wheat actually grown on Sealand or something like that, because it, it just comes across really distinctive. You're going to notice it's a mix of oatiness and wheat, and it almost smells like... Um, Oh, how can we even describe that? It's just got a little bit of almost turbidity to it. Like if you tried the Blizzard in a beer mug, the aroma, that that aroma that you get out of that beer on the malty side of things is like what you get out of this, but on steroids, if that makes sense. There's just a really distinctive sort of, um, there's just a really sort of distinctive kind of powdery, oaty and thick wheaty kind of note to these, um, to these Toyol double IPAs. Yeah, it almost, the thing that wants to come into my head is to say that it smells like, you know, fresh paper. It really just has a little bit of that kind of aroma to it, like, it smells like fresh paper, but obviously it's wheat and it's oats in there. It's, it's really unusual that, but that's a trend I've noticed in these, um, these Toro beers, actually. They just have this really distinct, thick, wheaty and sort of slightly powdery, oaty kind of note to them. They smell very thick in the malt base, actually, um, but they're always usually well, very well balanced. But yeah, the aroma in this, again, is very, very interesting. It's a beautiful smelling beer, for sure. But I'll need to ask them if it's a specific type of wheat or something they're using in the malt bases because it's um, it really is just very distinctive. Um, and, you know, different kinds of wheat grown in different places is obviously going to give you... Um, you know, they are obviously going to give you different aromas and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, interesting. So, yeah, um, the backbone of this beer, obviously, is a nice kind of soft white bready you note. Know? As I said, you've got a kind of thick wheat quality to the beer. And it's quite a, it almost smells like quite a dry wheat in some ways. But, again, it comes across as a little bit turbid and sort of dry and thick in the aroma, definitely. There's a nice bit of oatiness in here. And it has a little bit of that kind of powdery oaty sweetness that you can sometimes get. It really has some of that in it, for sure. Um... And you've also got a good little bit of, um, you've also got a wee touch of a kind of sort of Werther's original butter candy type thing coming out of this one. You do get a wee bit of the sweetness in there. And that's a trend that I've noticed in some of these uh, New England IPAs throughout Scandinavia recently. They do have a wee bit of that kind of um, sort of buttery um that wee bit sort of butter candy where there's original type thing there's definitely a bit of that in here but i'd say that the kind of thickness of the wheat and the sort of smooth powdery kind of thing you get out of the oats in this one really does um it really does sort of dominate the malty base in the beer but um yeah it's got a good malty presence to it this one a little bit of bread crust i think comes out of it a little bit later on but i really like how um how this one um how this one goes um so yeah take a bit of time and just appreciate the malty side of this beer but like I say that thick oaty wheaty kind of thing that you get out of this I think is becoming a bit of a trademark of um of toil 
on the on the New England IPA side of things for sure. But yeah, on the hoppy side of things, and that's where our focus should be with these New England IPAs. So for me, the um, yeah, for me, the um, there's a little tiny touch of earthiness to this one, but the green component for me has a nice bright floral aromaticity. I wouldn't describe it as being like spicy or anything like that. It's just got a nice kind of um, brightness to it. It's not zesty, it's not spicy, it's just got a nice kind of smooth brightness to it. There's a little bit of grassiness to this beer as well. Um, it's got a wee tiny touch of zest to it, but again for me, the green component of this beer, um, you have to take the aroma in quite deeply to get the zestiness out of the grass. Um, but I'm not sure exactly when this beer would have been canned or whatever. I think we probably get it a few weeks after it's released in, uh, in Denmark, come to think of it. So it maybe has been sitting for a little bit, but I always think that New England IPAs need a little bit of time in the can to mellow out. So that's sometimes not a bad thing. But yeah, green component for me, good little bit of floral brightness, a little bit of grassy note in there, a little touch of zest. But again, um, it comes across really nicely. On the fruity side of things, I think, again, it's really um, well balanced in that sense. So it actually comes across as quite sort of tangerine and orange. I wouldn't be surprised if it's mosaic that's in here. There's just something telling me there's a wee touch of a mosaic -y kind of thing going on. Um, there's something definitely orangey about this beer. I mean, you know, it could be mosaic, it could be a bit of a, a Zaka or something like this. I'm not quite sure. But for me, yeah, there's a good wee hint of orange, you know, I'm getting orange on the very front of the nose, but behind that, there's definitely a tropical element. You know, you've got a bit of mango in there. I wouldn't go as far as saying passion fruit, to be honest with you. The 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 um, the um fruits come across as very soft in that sense. So you've got a nice, slightly more oily tangerine orange, a little bit of a softer kind of mango quality in there. Some apricots and papayas and stuff like that for sure. But yeah, you've got some really nice kind of um qualities coming out of this beer for sure on the fruity side of things. So yeah, for me, a bit of mango, a bit of an apricot-y, um, bit of an apricot uh, sort of papaya type thing, definitely a bit of that there, and then a nice kind of oily tangerine orange. I'd love to know what hop is in this one, what two hop, what, I think it's probably two or three hops that are in this, to be honest. But yeah, it comes across very, very nicely in its aroma. But um, yeah, I think it does, um, it does give it, it does give a very good account of itself. So take a bit of time to enjoy that aroma before you get stuck in. We're going to taste this beer now and just see how we get on. So um, yeah, let's go for it. Double IPA number four from Toro in Svinninga on Sjælland over in Denmark. 8.6% double New England IPA. Let's get stuck in. Slanju, Skull, cheers. Oh yeah, that's pretty damn nice again, actually. I was, you know, I'm just going to say thumbs up to Toil. Another really solid, really drinkable um, New England double IP. I mean, for an 8.6 percent, this is stupidly easy to drink. But a lot of these New Englands are actually. You don't, you know, they cover the booziness so well in these beers. Mm. But yeah, that's really. Nicely, um, it's really nicely executed that. Um, does it have a can on date? I think it does on the bottom. Let me just put the rest of the beer in the glass just now. You can feel the kind of oatiness and wheatiness coming out of the beer a little bit more before you go into the aftertaste. Um, it's got batch numbers, best before the 16th, 12th, 2021, but it doesn't say when. Doesn't say when it was actually canned though. That's the thing. So yeah, I'm not sure about this. I wish I, I wish that um they would put canned on dates in these things, but I've got a feeling this beer was released at some point in February. Pretty sure this one was released in February, come to think of it. So maybe at the time that I'm drinking it, it's maybe about four or five weeks old, something like that. So yeah, not at its absolute freshest, but I would always think that, you know, you need to have these, the, the, these beers, I think New England IPAs need to sit in the can for about two weeks just to mellow out a little bit or all you get in my experience is green. So yeah, um, but I think this one it is in pretty nice condition, but you can feel a little bit that the wheat is starting to kind of thicken up a wee bit in this one. And that for me is one of the signs when a New England IPA is starting to kind of just lose its freshness a little bit. So you can get a teeny bit of that in this beer, but I think overall it gives a really a good account of itself. I think this is another solid, solid effort from Toil. So well done to them. You can see why this beer got a lot of praise and why the series gets a lot of praise.
And in fairness, if it was released in the middle of February, we would get it. It's released here on the 1st of March, if I remember rightly. So yeah, it's, it's kind of my fault that I'm delaying it another week or something. Well, you've got delivery time and then I've had this beer for about a week. So partly my fault, but yeah. Um, but where to start with this one then? It's it's quite similar to the other ones, but it's just a really nicely executed beer. And these days, there's so many New Englands on the market. It's hard for them to do something, you know, just kind of really crazy and out there. So all you can ask for is that these beers are just very well crafted. So um, yeah, straight away with this one then. You've got that nice kind of smooth white bready quality there that just blankets uh, the middle of your tongue um if you go to that border region between middle third and back third of your palate you can feel there's definitely a bit of a kind of thicker almost slightly doughier quality pushes its way up out of the beer but then on the back third of your palate you definitely get more of the wheatiness and the wheat feels just a little bit more i don't know if turbid is the right word but it just feels thicker and more you know kind of sort of it's coagulated the right word. It just the wheaty notes on the back third of your palate just feel really quite thick. It doesn't the wheat doesn't have a kind of bitiness to it in this beer. It really just has a kind of big thickness, if that makes sense. And that's probably one of the things that makes the Tolo beer stand out for me is that normally wheat would give you a big bitiness, but in these Tolo ones it just gives you a kind of thickness if you like. Yeah. But yeah. The more that you drink of this, the more that your mouth kind of mellows up to it. And the malty base, I think, really sweetens up a little bit too. But yeah, back third of your palate, I think, is all about the thick kind of wheaty notes. There's a teeny bit of bitiness to that as well. But back third of your palate is very, very thick. As you move further forward, the thickness just drops away. Then you get that kind of bread crusty sort of thing on the border region between middle third and back third of your palate then as you move further forward from that you've got the soft kind of white bready notes kind of sitting underneath there then on top of that you can feel the sort of oaty um you can really feel the kind of oaty powdery notes coming out of the beer it just gets a little bit thicker and things so yeah i really like how how everything in this beer just sort of pieces together absolutely So yeah, it's quite a straight, you know, it's as I say, it's a straight shooting malt base. It does what you what you expect from the style, but it's just very well executed. I think we don't need to say too much more about it than that. The only other thing I think we should say about this one is that in the middle third of your palate, you've got a nice little kind of circular sort of thing to it, which I really like. So you've got a really nice kind of circular thing in the middle of your palate, and that's where you get that kind of Werther's Original sort of butter candy type thing. That's where the sweetness comes out of the beer. Those are the alcoholic flavours to this one. But yeah, it feels like quite a thick malt base that um, that you're getting in this one. So I like that. And as I say, that seems to be a bit of a distinctive feature of these um, these Tool ones that I've been having over the last little while. But um, yeah, pretty cool, I have to say. So, pardon me get this one um in terms of the hoppy side of things then which as i say is where our focus should be with these uh, these new englands in the back corners of the palate there is a teeny little bit of earthiness there but to be honest it's quite minimal as you move further forward from that it gets a slight bit of herbal quality then as you reach the kind of front corners of the palate it gets a nice little bit of a more kind of floral aromatic -y kind of thing going on and i think it does develop a tiny little bit of spiciness and a tiny little bit of dankness the further that you go into the aftertaste with the beer but then yeah round the um the back sorry round the front curve of the tongue not the back and um, round the front curve of the tongue it's distinctly more kind of lighter and grassy and it doesn't have the z i thought it was going to have a wee bit of zestiness on the grassy side of things judging by the um judging by the aroma but it really doesn't it's just got a nice kind of lighter quality to it so i can appreciate that about this beer definitely But yeah, I would say that the green component, to be honest with you, really suits the um, it really suits the the kind of way the fruity side of things come out. And I think it's fair to describe this beer as being overall as a New England IPA. It's quite thick, but it's quite juicy, and it's got a wee touch of kind of sort of oily slickness to it at the same time as well. So yeah, it's really interesting how that all just kind of merges together. But yeah, I think that covers the green component, just a little bit of a lighter grassy sort of thing around the front curve of the tongue. But yeah, on that front 
third year pal as I always say that's where you get that nice oily bubble where those juicy fruity esters just roll their way out of the beer so on that border region between front and middle third year palate again you've got a little bit of a thicker kind of doughy thing in there there's a wee bit of a bread crusty kind of thing and then underneath you've got a nice kind of smooth white bready quality to the beer so I really like how that um how that side of things goes together the backbone of the fruits in this beer um, is the is the, the sort of soft white bready kind of quality but yeah at the back of that front third of your palate you've got a nice little touch of um, there is a wee tiny bit of a stronger passion fruit in there but very quickly it starts to become more of a kind of mango type quality could this just be citra and mosaic that's in this one could it just be that but at the same time there's something telling me you know it could be a little bit of like El Dorado or something because it has you know, it's got a wee bit of passion fruit and it's got a wee bit of mango and it reminds me of El Dorado as well because um, Citra I think is quite a bit more complex than this one and it could you know Simcoe would be the option but I think Simcoe Simcoe feels a little bit less mangoey than this normally from what I remember but yeah there is I think it doesn't really matter what hop it is I just like playing guess the hops with these beers but and it's, it's more and more difficult as the days go by to keep up with that because there's so many new hops coming out there but yeah for me there's a wee tiny tiny touch of passion fruit at the back of that front third of your palate as you move further forward it gets a little bit more sort of mango like and then you get one or two little hints of you know apricotty type elements out of the beer but not a lot of that but then on the front half of that um, front third of your palate it's got a wee bit more of a kind of oily tangerine sort of thing so um yeah i do like how that side of the the beer goes together it's quite a straight shooting new england double ipa this one and i think the further you go into the aftertaste with it as well you start to get more of that oily tangerine sort of thing out of it so i think mosaic and i think maybe you know el dorado <coughs> pardon me simcoe or maybe even a wee touch of citra or something like that um could be going on with this one the hops are very familiar in this so i don't think it's anything too kind of crazy to be honest with you but um it certainly works you know really quite well so yeah it gets a thumbs up from me this one it's quite um in a lot of ways it gives you everything you'd expect to the style but again it's all about just how well it's crafted i think that's a fair statement to make about this one so well done to toil once again with this one really quite interesting i can't remember like one and two to compare it to that but I think yeah describe it as an independent beer basically and i think that gives you a good impression but um yeah in terms of the mouthfeel then just to round off the review i think yeah it's kind of top end of mid-bodied bottom end of full-bodied more likely to say top end of mid-bodied smooth carbonation there's a bit of oiliness to this one there's a nice bit of smoothness and thickness in there which i do like so quite a lot of that going on and you can feel this beer does get a wee bit thicker in the malt base the more that you drink of it in terms of hoppy bitterness there's not a lot of ibu to this beer i think it's a fairly standard 25 or 30 which is a wee bit surprising normally with a double ip like this i think usually um, it's a good idea to take up to 40 and just give it a little bit more bite but then again this one doesn't have the, the wheat comes across as very smooth in this one rather than being bitey so maybe that's not needed but then you've got some nice kind of juicy fruity characters coming out of the beer so yeah i like uh, i do like how this um how this goes together um so yeah the fruit it's a it's a really solid solid beer this one it's quite typical of what we've had from toil in the past in terms of the double ipas the new england doubles and within that style bracket it's a really nice example so definitely worth trying in my mind so yeah i think that's a, a good place to kind of round off this review actually another solid solid new england double from toil and i wanted to review one of these because i hadn't done one for a wee while so pretty satisfied let's say that so yeah once again thank you for watching my beer reviews until the next time please like subscribe share all the usual youtube stuff let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below let me know what your favorite beers are from toil we will no doubt return to these guys at some point fairly soon i'd love to review a few more of their kind of classic beers final frontier is one that i'd love to have a go at and there's one of the porters that i'd love to have a go at as well but i forget the name now but yeah there's quite a few of the classic beers I'd like to have a go at so i will see what they're releasing from that side of things over the next little while but yeah this one was the um double ipa number four a new england double ipa 8.6 percent abv stupidly drinkable for its uh, alcohol actually but another really solidly executed beer from tool and that's what we've come to expect these days so yeah thank you again for watching check out my social media check out tool have a go at some of their beers black salts and body mox is out just now that's one of the best beers i've had from them make sure you get a hold of that beer while you still can. Slanja, Skull, cheers, catch you guys in the next review.